Good morning, everyone. Here in Brazil, it's uh, 10 43 in the morning. I know we have participants from many different countries on the other side of the Atlantic, different uh, time zones. So, good afternoon to them. It's a great pleasure to participate in table one as the moderator. My role will be to contextualize the theme of today's table, present the speakers, control the time of each uh, presentation, which are 15 minutes to each one, and handle the questions from participants to the speakers, which will be presented by the end of the four speeches planned for this morning. For this, we can start. The, today's table will deal about transdisciplinarity of research in maps and territories, opportunities and priorities for lack of All of us have strong connections with mountains, either through research on many different aspects, whether it's interest in its conservation, or we live, produce, or practice sports up in the mountains, or we are engaged in an effort to value them or to conserve them, preserve, or we think they inspire us in many different ways or other reasons. Mountains are sources of life inspiration. They have a great role for the balance of the earth with their multiple facets. Several different fields of sciences are activated to reach a better comprehension about them including their formation, dimensioning, and the, their evolution. Environmental impacts, they suffer the impacts these mountains cause on the environment. The proper uh, production uh, forms for them and other aspects. Thus, the study of mountains can be based on several different fields, for example, geography, geology, hydrology, climatology, soils, botanic, biology, ecology, agronomy, development, tourism, and many other things. These and other fields influence mutually and interlace in a way their borders are fluid. That's the transdisciplinarity view. And to discuss that in research on mountains, Today, we will have four notable panelists. For the first presentation today, I have the pleasure to invite Professor Fausto Sarmiento from the University of Georgia in the United States. Professor Fausto Sarmiento teaches, he's a professor of science of mountains at the University of Georgia in the United States. He is, works with the New Transmontology Collaboratory, researching evidence on the transformation of rural and then rural uh, landscape and markers in environmental changes, globally speaking, developing new narratives, uh, geopolitical for the sustainability of mountains as tropical environments are built, represented, regenerated, and contested. Professor Fausto, welcome to the table. Thank you for inviting the invitation to participate in this discussion at LACMON 2021. You will have 15 minutes. Before you start, I would like to remind you that all questions will be presented after the four presentations. Questions must be forwarded through the chat, which is active now for the event. Professor Fausto, the floor is yours. Muchas gracias. Bienvenidos a todos y buenos días, buenas tardes o buenas noches, de acuerdo a donde se encuentran ustedes. Para mí es un placer colaborar en este esfuerzo de desarrollar una red para estudios. It's a great pleasure to collaborate with these studies. I think we could share now my presentation. Espero que todos estén 
posibilidad we can all see the presentation. Thank you. Well, I'm going to be talking about the challenge of mountain environments, which made me prepare this recommendation for the colleagues in the region. In this case, we're talking about the changes we're facing as far as ecological conservation of mountains. We knew before that science led us to think we didn't have uh, different solutions when forests were facing problems. The deserts would, would, would come. A scientist said that uh, back in the day, but now closer to the reality, we know that science uh, is going to be the determined for that. In uh, modern ecology, we talk about transdisciplinarity, cyclical uh, ecology, convergence, and also what in, and in societies we know as macho culture and uh, science. Understanding that, we have to see how mountain science has changed from the beginning of scientific knowledge, especially in Europe, on the waters uh, found in the New World. Uh, Dr. Turco that motivated the Museum of Madrid. There are many scientists that were interested in knowing better and acting uh, scientifically on it. And scientific expeditions from France, characterized the local conditions by using metrics, uh, Catalog. After Latin American mountains had this uh, thing, Nick uh, Carr is uh, Isaac Newton, and Scott Dufus, you know, each one of them had uh, a specific approach contributing to knowledge on mountains, the most important. Uh, Alejandro de Humboldt put together two terms to work on ecology. Alejandro is known as the father of uh, volcanology, magnetism, and it's the father of uh, changes in biogeography and uh, mountainology. It's important to mention that recently, we are both in this book determined that science started when we noticed through the work from Humboldt that everything was linked to nature. This book is essential, but the names of the local collaborators are not known as not mentioned. No one knows that Alejandro did all this without the support no one knows that. We know very little about the, the other collaborators. All of this is a challenge for us in science. We must know, we must mention uh, these people. Mountains are the place of ecology and offer. A new perspective here we see in this book published in 97, published by Netflix, two geographers uh, talking about important mountains. They created some theories uh, regarding this event. The United Nations declared uh, that there's a special year to uh, celebrate the December 11th day here, which is the Worldwide uh, Mountain Day. I could collaborate with our vision of mountains of the world, our perspectives, including important concepts we uh, recognize as essential for better understanding ecology. Ecology from yesterday, as you know, has changed before we thought that nature 
was nature itself untouched where there were interrelationships between biomes we would talk about the structure the laws and nature the mapping of the generalization of scientific knowledge we emphasize the use of that system but as uh Professor Ozun, we noticed that ecology is a bridge between science and society. And as of this publication of this book, which is in Spanish published in Mexico, we had a change in the perception of ecology. The ecology today, we're going to talk about ecosystems for landscapes, where we included concepts of biodiversity, balance, spheres, flows and specializations, the speciations. And we are also going to see how future landscapes will be, future uh, hybrid landscapes, uh, fruitful areas. We talked about different, uh, the, the Satoyama ontology, where we can apply scientific uh, ideas for the development of mountain uh, ecosystems. We are working towards a change of uh, paradigm from a vision of the past, we must have a new perspective vision of the future. We must change our mind to have a holistic view emphasizing the working to better understand the flow of the different balances, which is integrated of the mountains, uh, a convergent study for uh, diversity, knowing that mountains are dynamic, resilient. This is a, a the most important challenge to uh, recognize uh, mountains in Latin America and the Caribbean and include this new change in paradigms in our construction of the view of mountains. That's why we talk about transdisciplinarity, which encompasses different disciplines, it's multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary, all of this active incorporating innovation, regeneration, and the implication of transcendence, translation and transformation as essential products of the three disciplinarities, convergence and collaboration, which are required for our work. That's why we talk about ontology. To better learn a mountain to identify its essence, we need to use this representation of different hierarchical levels of the mountain. Today, we don't have this separation between national and social uh, areas. We study social ecological systems where hierarchy converts in non-aligned things to, uh, because of social changes. This new vision leads us to new schemes of our mountains to incorporate a new concept of complex systems adapted to uh, to the mountain ecosystems. Here we have this scheme where we synthesize the natural system and social system to mountain ecosystems where the vulnerability, the climate change implies essentially the studies of resilience for uh, mountain communities in the future. And thus, we place these uh, criteria as the triad of identity proposed to unite what we know in this community, the complementary dualism, messaging, the dynamic, the enthusiasm, and the Tawanchi, which is this complete relation of totality, the holistic anarchy uh, that we're talking about in the uh, in the Andes, when we talk about all this, we talk about the three rules of the Akaika culture, where Aivian uh, reciprocity, 
is essential for the working of our network. So the virtual reliving of uh, these different people uh, is given by the maintenance of their sacred places. The, the patrimonial landscape must have this uh, care maintaining all the elements. So here I leave you with some priorities of our network where first we have the transdisciplinarity as, as an essential act. So the geopoetic and geopoeticism studying the transformation of rural landscapes in, in working with ethnoecology and knowledges. We also have to study eco-critical challenges and incorporate different opportunities to innovate uh, so that our function as members of a scientific network is successful. Thank you for your attention. Uh, well, I'd like to like thank Professor Sarmiento for the great presentation. He showed us a, she talked about the emergence of ecology, mountain studies, the, the study of landscapes, different uh, changes in paradigms, focusing the holistic view we must have on the mountains, Presenting fully the scale morphology and gave us tips on priorities for lack of. Thank you, Professor Fausto. I ask you to wait a bit longer till the end of all presentations when we will have the QA session. Next, we're going to move on to the presentation of Iracema Alcantarayala from the National University of Mexico. She has a diploma in geography, uh, philosophy, and languages of the University of Mexico, UNAM, and doctorate in geography by King's College in London. Postdoc from the Massachusetts, the MIT in Cambridge, the United States, researcher of the Geography Institute of UNAM, where she acts in research in geomorphology, process of mass motion, research on disasters and forensics of disasters. She's a member of the Scientific uh, College of Geoscience of the University, also in the Scientific Committee research in mountains from the global program of meteorological and consultative team for the regional uh, office of the UN to reduce the risk of disaster in Latin America and the Caribbean. Professor Ida Sema, we welcome you to the table and thank you for having accepted the invitation to participate in this discussion at LAC 2021. I just want to tell you that questions will be at the very end of the core presentation and they must be presented through the chat channel. We ask people to identify themselves with their names, institutions, and origin, and if necessary to indicate or who the question is for. Professor Eresema, you will have 15 minutes and the floor is yours. Muy buenos días a todos. Agradezco la invitación a los organizadores para intervenir en este interesante encuentro y tener la posibilidad de participar en esta mesa con colegas y amigos, todos ellos sobresalientes expertos en ambientes de montaña. El día de hoy compartiré con ustedes algunas ideas y reflexiones acerca de... Risks and integral uh, focusing on a transdisciplinary focus. I divided this presentation in four parts. The first one is 
uh, understanding the risks of disasters, and then I'm going to talk about integrated research of the risks of disaster and a transdisciplinary view. From these concepts, I'll be able to talk about the ingredients of the integrated uh, management of disasters, risks, and then we're going to talk about the transdisciplinary perspectives in uh, mountainous territories. The understanding of risks of disasters uh, requires an integrated vision to be able to identify the complete uh, aspects, physically and socially speaking. The impact of disasters uh, in this century and for decades intensified when compared to the uh, years before that. So here we have the number of disasters with 1.19 million people being affected and economic losses that reach $1.63 trillion. And we know that until yesterday, we had more than 3.2 billion people affected by COVID and many being uh, affected by that. So it's urgent to count on solid public policies focused on integrated management of risks of disasters. The disasters are systemic processes developed throughout time. Their causes are uh, rooted in the history of our society, its structure and organization that includes the relationships among human beings and nature and all of the transformation, the disasters that generate from the risks. The risks is generated from several interactions that uh, threaten and expose us. The threats are defined as processes and phenomena that lead to disasters. They are of several uh, origins, can be natural origin like volcanic activity, tsunamis, and social natural like floods and landfalls, anthropogenic, like leakages, uh, and they can be biologic like viruses or social biological, like the COVID situation. The vulnerability is a very complex aspect that refers to the susceptibility level of a person, a community or a system that can undergo negative effect that can be uh, triggered by several threats, physical, social, economic processes, also institutional and environment that are that get build up through time. And these are the, these processes that generate vulnerability. We can mention the lack of planning, poverty, illiteracy inequality, corruption, uh, uh, bad administration, and also climate change. The exposure to threats of all origins are related to our territories. And this exposure can be related to where people are, uh, natural, uh, and all of that is important for sustainability to face the threats and vulnerabilities. We can say that the disasters are not natural. They are a combination of threats and vulnerability and exposure. It requires research integrated uh, with a basis this kind of research takes place not very frequently. This analysis uh, done by these authors shows that if we have advances during these last 15 years, 
most of it is centralized in monodisciplinary aspects uh, that were done by North American students from the academy. And the knowledge seems to be limited and there are issues in research and practice. The way of doing research is through forensics research that talks about the risks of disasters once we understand the causes and the factors that induce them. One of the most important aspects is that the understanding of the current moment is connected to the past. And consequently, for us to understand the causes of disasters, we have to be able to identify the causes and the effects and risks that come from vulnerability and also from the social construction of risk. The authors, uh, the actors actually are processes that have to do with uh, historical development situations, political practices, and other things that occur during history, which are risk-inducing factors that increase the risks of vulnerability and exposure of a community, a society, or a system that determine the dynamics of the disaster's risk. So understanding these processes that are connected to the risks is essential to elaborate public policies, to have an integrated administration, not only focusing on the, the response to emergencies. During the last decades, we had the development of research related to different kinds of threats. But, but even though with the generation of all of this knowledge, we still have to improve in terms of aspects that can avoid the risks, something more articulated, uh, where we understand the threats and the causes. It's important to, to have an integrated science to do that. We have in mind to make it more clear about these factors, these risk factors. So we have to understand the complexity of the risk of disaster. Uh, it requires a deep vision of these processes and practices that configure the risk in a way that we can inside in the co-production uh, of the practice to deal with this. And this is a complex uh, challenge. Also, we have to face political and bureaucratic aspects. According to Narvaz and other collaborators, the integrated management of the social process that involves three orders of the government and sectors of society and the application of policies and strategies of reduction of risk with the proposal of uh, preventing new risks of disasters and reduce the existing risks and control in a permanent way the factors that create these risks in society and being in consonance uh, within to have uh, in our agenda a more integrated human development, focusing on the economic aspects and so on. So management has to be seen as a process, not a product uh, of a transversal integral character. We have to focus on the different levels uh, and have a narrow uh, relationship with development that creates better organizational structures, institutional ones that are permanent and sustainable that ensure the participation of the social actors. We have key processes of the GIRD, risk 
table to prevent future risks, to reduce existing risk prepare responses. If we take that to the mountains, we'll have challenges regarding transdisciplinarity. Integrated governance of disasters is compared to this elephant uh, saying here, where their very wise people lived on an island. They wanted to know about the elephant. They had never seen one. And they perceived, they decided to touch it. One touched the ear, they, it felt like a fan. Uh, the other one touched the tail. Uh, another part of it felt like a tree. And another one touched it and the tail, it seemed like a rope. And there was this huge discussion among them, it, trying to understand what this elephant was like. The elephant that they couldn't really see, they could just touch. So if we had scientists here, they would also discuss because each scientist would see it differently and explain it in a different way. The same happens with disasters. So if we adapt uh, decision makers, we would have in practical terms, the response activities, how they work and not the management of the risk. The transdisciplinarity is a, a process of, of academic and non-academic participation that uh, help us solve pro the problem in practical terms and helps us identify and have solutions connected with uh, the relevance of the regional aspects. And it, uh, it is also uh, the co-production of knowledge. Transdisciplinarity is a major desire and a major challenge that we all face. Imagine this story about the elephant. We can think of a, a mountain area like that. There are several elements that we have to consider when we think of the mountains. In a general sense, uh, the vulnerability aspects regarding the mounts, we identified these factors, then as an, an accessibility, the several types of threats, frailty, adverse climate conditions, poverty, people living at the margin, abrupt terrains and others and but the mountains as we know are a location full of knowledge uh, and its landscape is wonderful and it has cultural uh, knowledge there and also the social aspect is important to take into consideration the isolation and the difficulty of access to that to these locations mainly now at the covid and, and so some of the important points regarding these communities we have seven eight locations in mexico that are not counted like in other places in the world where there are some mountainous regions and communities, indigenous communities create like bubbles where the virus doesn't uh, arrive. So it's a complex process, the management of these places, and that will help us create societies with well-being, safety, uh, quality of lives, strengthening of livelihoods, resilience, the production and strengthening of knowledge, a more sustainable management of the risks, and also 
sustainability. Thank you very much. Muito obrigada, professora Iracema, que ela, ela nos trouxe uma visão. Thank you, professora Iracema, a very creative perspective, a very interesting on the management of disaster in mountain territories, showing that in order for this uh, disaster management to be more efficient, the focus must be transdisciplinary. She highlights that disasters are systemic. That's why it's so important to have transdisciplinarity. I thought it was really interesting, the, the story about the elephant that precisely shows the importance of this uh, transdisciplinary uh, uh, issue, how we can obtain a actual image interpretation of the mountain environment. Professor Irasema had uh, a few problems with the internet, that's why we couldn't have uh, her video, just the audio. Just to remind that questions must be forwarded through the chat channel uh, with your name, the name of the person asking the question, the institution and the place where you're from. And, and maybe if necessary, the person who the question is for. I'd like to correct a small mistake and to inform you that this table also relies on Dr. Hazalara from the Alliance for Mountains, who is helping us as a uh, writer. She's uh, scripting down everything. The next speaker will be Professor Sergio Andres Moreira Munoz from Pacifical University of Chile to the doctor in natural science through the a university in Germany, graduated in geography and geography by the Catholic University in Chile. Sergio Andres, welcome to the table on behalf of Black Month 2021. We thank you for having accepted the invitation to participate in this discussion. As all others, you will have 15 minutes and the floor is yours as of now. Thank you, Monica, for the introduction. Thank you. Bien. Eh, voy a tomar algunos de los puntos eh, que estaba comentando. They have talked about a few things. I'm going to be speaking Spanish. Uh, there will be translation. Otherwise, uh, I'll, I'll try to speak in a uh, slower way to make it easy to understand. Three years ago, we got together to start this network in Nova Friburgo where we visited these uh, wonderful mountains. I hope next time we can uh, go out to the field, be able to get all these things uh, accomplished. Well, uh, follow me on the footsteps of Humboldt, already mentioned here, and also emphasizing what Fausto talked about which is the need to reinterpret this vision of colonizing this vision. There's also many things to recover, historically speaking, on the contributions of Humboldt and Caldas and any other collaborators, and the acknowledgement that uh, must be placed on the table, as Fausto said, there are many important things we must attend to. Biogeography in mountains, climate changes in mountains, 
we have a few examples to compare. as demonstrated by Humboldt in 1802 and, and the comparison to with these other scientists, collaborators on the advanced longitudinal on the line of the snow and vegetation changes over the years. After Humboldt's visit, there are also other researchers such as Jean Moret and Priscilla Muriel who also talked about this comparison, this vision of Humboldt, not all from the same region, but uh, with cross information on plants that came from Antisana. We have a lot of material to discuss. Well, we can move on. Here are some examples of biogeography from Bolivia, detailing specifically the distribution of species. In this case, reptiles in different uh, altitude levels. This gives us more detailed knowledge on the creation of species and the threats and how to preserve them. Also some studies on plants, on the distribution of this uh, wonderful group of plants in the Andes and the Atlantic coast in Brazil, establishing the relationship biogenetic, biogeographical of this magnificent group. And we have the possibility to uh, move forward with a few more collaborations in the continental aspect. Also on the conservation, we had some advances, collaborations, uh, contacts on the concept of biosphere reservation. We have worked with the civil society for many decades and the network of the reservations in biosphere, which are uh, spread throughout the world, including reservations in biospheres uh, in mountains in Australia, you know, which is the highest altitude. 2,000 meters over sea level, above sea level. So here we have a little mountain, but uh, we can also collaborate with these mountains, including mountains of islands like Juan Fernandez, for instance. We can work with biodiversity, cultural biodiversity, the relationship between biodiversity, landscape, geography is linked to biocultural diversity in several different spheres, scales. And our research, the habitats we must talk about the power issues regarding these uh, landscapes, the ethical uh, fundament of uh, values, which has been previously mentioned. This fact in a real tragedy, it, it was already mentioned by Iracema, a environmental tragedy that took place over the entire Latin America, emphasized by other colleagues as well. And there's a need for us to move forward in aspects of political uh, geography with different bases, critical extractivism, 
actual feminists and, and actual things, but they can know they're not there. And it's not always easy to do so. In this sense, the advances between disciplines are less. It's easy to say, let's work in a transdisciplinary way, but it's not simple. I'm going to leave that for a uh, discussion of the panel later on. We are used to working with our own methods, our own language. We base ourselves in, in a few paradigms of each discipline. So creating bridges between disciplines is uh, very complicated. We create uh, new concepts, which is already a challenge. The challenge is for the concepts to make sense, not simply deal with them as new logisms. We have to work with cosmovisions, and it's all a big challenge. In the sense, physical geography faces the need of integrating conversation with the social uh, sectors and cosmopolitics. We have cosmovisions, indigenous, the peasants, different changes to politics. We see that as a dialogue of trans and interdisciplinary knowledges. I'm going to give you an example to conclude this presentation. Trying to bring a few uh, things to this discussion. This is a work from Josephine Pilisatis, an artist that represents you being higher uh, Andes from the Caribbean to Cabo This expo was at the museum in Santiago, and it was um, over a hot table, so it slowly melts, representing global climate change and also the melting of the traditional concepts that help us and make us understand mountains as something permanent that today seems so fragile and are at risk of disappearing. Our next bet. Talking about the past and tradition, we also see how landscapes will be hybrid uh, landscapes, virtual ones, and how we're going to uh, work with this with social media, virtual realities, uh, realities, and how we can contribute to maintain a memory and a spirituality linked to the mountains. This is what I would like to show you this morning, and I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for such an interesting uh, presentation. Professor Sergio highlighted the the importance of this uh, mountain, the importance of biogeography, emphasizing the concept of biodiversity, cultural biodiversity, the biodiversity, uh, also showing us the importance of considering people, the people who live and uh, have a relationship with the mountains and showed us in a very didactic way that transdisciplinarity is an evolution as of the consideration of isolated disciplines, then 
the multidisciplinary vision, considering different fields of knowledge to understand the mountains, and the interdisciplinary view showing the connections between the different disciplines even more evolved is the transdisciplinary focus approaching the interactions between science, the interlacing of different fields of knowledge. Just to remind you that questions are uh, for the very end. In the chat channel, it's available a link for a form, a Google form where participants can, and we encourage you to uh, answer that, answer all the questions, which will give us an idea to see how LACMON is doing. Now, our last presentation, Carla Marchand from the Austro University in Chile. She is a geographer and master in urban development from the Catholic University of Chile, doctor in natural sciences. And also with a degree from the University in Austria, environmental and evolutive and researcher in territorial knowledge. She's interested in understanding the processes of transformation, socioeconomic, and rural and mountain uh, societies in Chile and Latin America. She develops uh, studies in Austria and in the Andes with a interdisciplinary look. Within this line, with a local knowledge, agroecology, and biocultural memory of communities of peasants and indigenous in the Andes, south of Chile. This has been the focus of our work for the last two years. Carla, welcome. We thank you for having accepted the invitation to participate in this table in LACMO 2021. As all the others, we you will have 15 minutes for your presentation. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can. Thank you very much to everybody to be here with us. It's a pleasure and to talk about and reflect on some important elements and reflections that we have developed along with other co many colleagues and people that developed in this line of research in mountainous territories, transdisciplinarity, and be able to exchange some of the elements involved. My presentation will focus on opportunities. The opportunity that I'd like to mention that is related to the existence of the territories in Chile as a natural laboratory for us to check the sciences of transformation. Uh, so we have uh, knowledge to be able to connect to this transformation science. I'd like to invite you to this reservation, natural reservation, close to where I live in Chile. So we're trying to contextualize what represents to have uh, Chile as a mountainous country. We have uh, developed mountainous uh, knowledge, uh, also the cities around it, the ecosystem, and uh, all of what the mountains offer us. So we have the privilege of sharing um, a little bit of other countries in that area, in the Andean mountain chain. 
So looking at the challenges that relate to this and how this environmental change is really uh, focused and how and the impacts it has on the mountains and the social economical impacts also that create challenges and also open up for opportunities. We cannot hear her now. She has an issue with the connection. Okay, now she's back. To develop the cities in a more sustainable way, in the sense, let's take a step in the sense of regenerating and transforming what was destroyed in the climate change issue. So there are several challenges uh, that we have to find ways of uh, deal with, thinking about local community, cultural values related to these communities. So the biosphere reservations is something that uh, makes us get together along with Andressa, my colleague. Andres, sorry, how we're going to overcome these contextual aspects systemic wise and also advance knowledge in terms of development of the 2030 agenda and to acquire knowledge that really help transformation. And we have to think uh, of it as an interdisciplinary basis. This basis of knowledges must, to, must imply the participation, expand to other interest areas from the knowledge of other methodologies, uh, di different disciplines, and the generation of synergy and a more, it's a much more complex knowledge. This perspective of complexity, we have to think of this new paradigm of this social ecological system. And we have to rupture that man nature relationship that is a blind one, especially in our continent. We have to overcome dichotomies that uh, the traditional science recognize as truth. So here are some territories of woods, temperate climate in the Chile region, the southern region, where I work with other collaborators, other researchers and communities that are related directly with this, the agriculture work, families, indigenous communities in these areas. So this area has a family farming of livelihood, as was mentioned by uh, the other speaker. And one of the most affected, mainly now because of the pandemic, and has issues of safety and food sovereignty with the uh, facing an issue with the new liberalism. This tree, uh, sorry, there's a lot of biodiversity here, there. You can see these products that are essential for the livelihood of these indigenous communities in this and other communities in this territory. So we work on the fact of the perspective of the rescue of the biocultural memory. We understand the biocultural memory as a body of local knowledges established by uh, creeds uh, of these communities. And where there's a, a lot of knowledge, they're not Cartesian, they, they have another logic that they follow, another rationale. Also the practices 
and management of this biodiversity in this territory. So this way we build a, a work along with other researchers. We have developed these nurseries in the mountains that maintains the cultural memory, which we share with the people from Macro from Argentina. We have to understand how this practices can help keep the, the memory of culture in these territories, in the communities. We also work with the rationale of trying to advance the integration of other sources of knowledge. In this sense, the memory of the social ecological aspects that we understand as a, a single paradigm. So there's the biodiversity uh, in a more holistic view that provides a new ontological uh, view of things. And in the act, along with the act, uh, the students from the academy, they have a, a, a view of how to build along with the communities. So in our uh, point of view, it's a challenge to work with these students due to their own uh, belief systems and knowledge and, and their own ego can be an issue to deal with. So we have been working for many years with uh, these women from these communities organized in cooperatives as we have here in, in this region of the Araucaria region. We have some threats there and one of the main ones is the loss of agro biodiversity. And why do we have these losses? They are related to the practice of the local knowledge and the transmission of this knowledge. So we have some farming uh, nurseries that are in the mountains and privileged locations that we can reactivate this memory that was lost. And sometimes it's hard to transmit it because people uh, leave these locations. So our work focuses on understanding the practices, the links with these local knowledge, this local way of doing things. And this is a transdisciplinary work. It involves veterinarians, biologists, geography, arts. So we were able to reconstruct the memories, to know inventories, species, and uh, get in contact with biodiversity that was not present. And we were able to collect species from the woods. And we were able to interpret nature through local knowledge. And also we worked uh, in the role that these mountains have of the way the landscape uh, affects us. We can see on the right this book where there are some in some contribution, you can have access to our work and the access of, to the work of our colleagues. So uh, what are the challenges in family farming considering the climate changes, we have issues in the region where there is a, a reduction of vegetation. We have to find answers and think about strategies that work in this transdisciplinary rationale. We have this example here 
which means the capacity of understanding that then the people that live there are able to to apply they think about solutions to their problems in other ways also of adapting their adaptive capacity of change of transforming the practices into solutions and activities considering all of the changes implied sorry her uh, can't hear her now we have to see how transformation uh, her, is also related to the role of the academic work. I think we have some advancements in that area. And so we understand that it is possible and it's something that the territory and its inhabitants need. So this knowledge is important in terms of belonging to the territory. It's a challenge. How to work with these policies. And also we need to use another rationale to think about this, to be able to uh, make these processes happen. And also how this is going to be inserted in public policies in a more effective way. It, it has to be at the service of the people that make decisions with uh, an easy uh, language, a friendly language. As this initiative is with the presence of all of us in this scenario. So I'd like to thank you for listening to this presentation. Thank you for such an interesting presentation. And thank you for having accepted the uh, invitation to participate as a speaker. Professor Carla brought us her view on mountain territories as laboratories for the development of science and transformation, highlighting the notion of social ecological systems implying on relationships uh, between societies and nature, as all other speakers, she highlights the importance of considering the people who live, produce, interact with mountain environments. Interesting what she presented as a rescue to the valuing and the collective uh, restoration of the biocultural memory, the, the local knowledge in mountain environments, this integration of local knowledge with academic knowledge, this holistic view, which is really important for the evolution of knowledge on mountains. She also showed us the difficulties, the challenges for this view of co-creation of knowledge to be implemented. We have reached the end of the four presentations. Great presentations, all highlight the importance of transdisciplinarity uh, for the study of mountains. I think that encourages us to think of using this focus to understand mountains. Let's now move on to Q and A. Uh, I am certain there will be a great debate now. I'd like to start with one question, and right after, there will be a couple more, and we can have a couple sessions of three questions each, and the speakers can answer as they please. First question. I'd like to propose is how that's the great difficulty all speakers talked about the importance of transdisciplinarity the new focus that this is the new way for us to advance more 
they consider they're considering all the fields of knowledge and how these fields of knowledge interact and influence each other and also considering the the few of people who live interact with the mountains we all have this awareness that transdisciplinarity is the way to go but we have the challenge of how to foster this view this focus this interdisciplinary way almost all researchers are used to think in their boxes that's what's normal the traditional way working in their own fields how do you open up and create space for this transdisciplinary way how to interact with researchers from other areas and how do you create a transdisciplinary focus how, what difficulties we may anticipate and how can we overcome these difficulties that's one question now let me take a look here I am going to ask a couple more and we will have three questions for the speakers to answer. The second question is from João Domingos Pinheiro Filho. He asks, what is the importance of research to promote the dialogue as far as diversity of nominative terms, regional, ethical, uh, pronouns? How does that strengthen the network? He explained the territory dimension and the social diversity in Brazil is a way for the Latin America and the Caribbean to see this uh, aspect. Another question extracted from the chat channel from Julio Cesar Ribeiro. How can we acquire the book from Professor Fox? Well, the third question then from Cristiane Passos de Matos. Last question of this session. Sorry, this is not a question. Fourth, what's the importance of research to promote the dialogue? No, that's the question I asked first. Another question from Raquel Bardi from Embra for Professor Irasema. How can science contribute to greater integrity of public policies in mountain environments? What are the themes that you consider prioritary and integrators? So three questions. I don't know whether Professor Irasema would like to start that was especially for her, but all others, you know, uh, feel free to participate. Each question, let's say three minutes. Can we start? Professor Irasema is, has her audio turned off. Ok, bueno, eh, voy a, a retomar eh, dos de las, de las preguntas. La, la última que hacen. Let me go back. The question on how science can contribute to the different fields of knowledge. I think researching on mountains, we get in touch with populations and communities from the very beginning of our research, there's a synergy between between researchers and the people from the mountains. So, so we can interact with the community. We, we don't simply go there and through knowledge. We understand the, all the problems from the communities and we see how they analyze 
interpret their own context and from that we can establish a dialogue to establish this knowledge there is also the co-production of knowledge as essential but if we don't start the dialogue we cannot move towards this uh, goal one of the most evident ways that we all use is the methodology of community participation where we share ideas and we can discuss solutions. I would also like to talk about the obstacles uh, of transdisciplinarity. It's easy to say it's important to have transdiscipline uh, for the transformation should be the goal of every research, but there are obstacles that we uh, have not considered that go beyond interaction between investigators, researchers, and communities. That's an easy way to act. I think over the years, we have a lot of practice relating with other disciplines and in different communities, but the main obstacle is when we get close to those who make decisions, how they're going to transmit the information together with the communities. And we get to a wall. As far as politicians, there are economic interests which are above the well-being of the populations and the environment we have to work on a dialogue a broader dialogue and also working at the educational level to be able to talk to politicians that they must have basic knowledge on the planet and the society and we must identify convergent ways for all of us to visualize, for all of us to have this view, for us to forget about our egos, uh, politics, uh, economic interests. That's very hard for risk management. We face these problems every day. So we must work on that. We must uh, work with the transdisciplinary researchers, the different actors players where science must be an ally to the communities in mountains. These are the aspects that I would like to talk about and I give the floor back. I don't know if other uh, speakers would like to answer for that. If you allow me to, I would like to to answer the first question, how to get to transdisciplinarity. I think there are three principles. First, an educational heritage that turned this into these researchers. And there must be a change in view of how we are doing this science. If we keep the same isolation scheme in different academic parts, in which our postdoc speciality is something tiny regarding the entire science, which happens to different colleagues, then we're not going to be able to move on towards uh, transdisciplinarity. But if one person changes these this thought and changes the way of thinking, we must focus on work with the uh, the sponsoring of science to direct that. This is a, a, a must for that, for us to make the financial uh, organisms so work together besides they must 
the methodological part of the study must be transdisciplinary. And other uh, types of knowledge as well must be a, a, a part of all the people, of all the, the agents involved in the study, so that the study is not just done. It must be done in a collaborative way. And third, I think we must insist in our sub-global sphere of the world so that all scientific uh, areas are not just linked to a specific place we must emphasize innovation. We cannot continue doing studies with the vision of the past. We must create new alternatives that we now can because of technology that enables us to have black mall network. We can have access to intelligent smart mountains to see how we can transform mountain communities in Latin America and the Caribbean. And that's essential for us to get to transdisciplinarity. That was already discussed with the different uh, spheres, such as the UN, who said it's uh, this is uh, extremely important. The person at the table then this person ahead of it was coordinating a multi-disciplinary team. That's the scheme that we must approach. These are the essential recommendations I would like to leave you with. Thank you for your answer. That's very useful. Thank you. Very clear. Well, I don't know whether Professor Carla and Sergio would like to add anything to this. Carla? So, I'm going to talk about what Fausto was mentioning about the sphere, the global sphere. I think it's necessary within the academy, academy and the universities and research centers to value also focus on the transdisciplinarity work because the academic and scientific structure of our universities that have a neoliberal focus point to indicators that are always in the individual uh, environment. The rationale of research points to a collaborative work that has a different kind of rhythm and other processes as Iracema mentioned as an academic production form that is that cannot get adjusted to the established standards that are being imposed to the academics. So in this sense, uh, getting the example from Chile, our institution has a study group that dedicates to study the subjects. We have this way of studying already. And this is also being in, uh, incentivated by the financial organizations it, and also a way of measuring productivity using a different rationale. So this new way of thinking or rethinking brings to us, as we have seen here, uh, that we had a different idea before and we have the need to move ahead into the direction of the type of science that we do nowadays in the south for the south considering the problems of the south that requires elements that 
enables us to reduce the gaps that we identify, but sometimes we're not able to solve in the environment uh, that the university exists in. So now, Fausto, your comment? The challenge is a huge one. We have clear, specific challenges, but the major one is to decolonize and change this uh, view in the universities and the aspect of, of financing and uh, how to finance research that is part of it and also the way that us researchers are assessed and that is related to this whole view this machining view so this transdisciplinary proposals is something a bit transversal in the communities and also it affects human relations and non-human relations also so we we face several difficulties in this sense and the idea of the university uh, also it works in another sense in a way that it, it doesn't enable it to happen the financing aspect uh, we're able to develop uh, the university kind of work up to a certain point where we don't uh, put our work at risk and that uh, brings us to think about our surrounding in the university and we learn to to navigate in that kind of sea which is the university and we have several sharks around us and it's a hard situation but sometimes if we try to work with this interdisciplinarity we're going to have a a bridge to the other side and that also uh, brings some risks because we can fall in the water so it's not something so easy to solve and also it's not easy to establish these bridges because to be able to have this real communication as fausto mentioned is something that uh, implies in several disciplines and many disciplines need the same concept so we have to work with glossaries and we need to advance sometimes uh, our colleagues face issues for example the colleagues that work in colombia others that work in venezuela face different kinds of problems in their university and sometimes the perspectives is that where the universities are located they can have a strong indigenous support and this is a revolutionary kind of support for example we're going to have some monographies some work that are not written are just reported and this is a way of advancing also in the direction of a more revolutionary science talking about a transdisciplinarity so but for us to get there it's going to take some time so what we can say is that the uh, the universities and the way they work are a bit limited nowadays we we still have this more capitalist view in the universities so looking at it in a more positive way i think that that the transdisciplinary view uh, 
uh, is connected to our academic limitations. We are uh, creating bridges to try to save the university because a uh, university that sometimes is strongly involved by its own issues. So thank you. You talked about uh, the importance of the view of the universities and also the incentives, as Fausto has just mentioned, the incentives for the adoption of this transdisciplinarity focus. Now we're going to move on to the second session of questions. We're going to ask three more questions. And Sergio, there's a question that uh, all, it seems like it came even before your participation. Uh, a participant asks Sergio, but the others can men, can comment on it too. The question is, what is the place of importance of research in terms of the dialogue of transversality in the mountains, ethically speaking, and how can that help the, the expansion of HIT, RIT? And other people can make comments on that too. The other question is, of our colleague, Luis Felipe. He asks, Dr. Anders, which is, he mentioned, sorry, this is not the question. Luis Felipe's question is, how to articulate, this is actually a question to everybody, how to articulate scientific knowledge with public policies? And another question, the third one from Alfonso Fernandes, Fernandes from the Concepcion University. The question is the following. There are evidences and work practices in mountain areas that enable us to identify and differentiate the interdisciplinarity and the trans interdisciplinarity. It seems to him that the questions need to be asked in a transdisciplinary way and that they are placed in a way that sometimes, yeah, the, there is an uh, exchange of words here. Three questions, who would like to start? Three minutes to answer each one of the questions. Would somebody like to answer this one? How to articulate the scientific knowledge? Maybe somebody that have has more to come to add to this. If you're going to answer this question, please unmute. Can I add, Fausto, if you allow me? Yes, go ahead. To the strengthening of the network, unfortunately, uh, we are connected more than ever, but separate at the same time. Here we are today all together from different parts of the world. But the local interactions, uh, and all the issues that we face in each location, the virtual congresses can't really uh, approach that. So this is an important thing to think about. Regarding the need of uh, dealing with life during the pandemic. 
and the research when we have developed the networks not many of these uh, findings make sense nowadays so we should maybe we could be sharing around the fire uh, drinking mate but nowadays we can't do that so this is a moment we have to think about the world with the pandemic we have to and also think about the world post pandemic we have to reinvent our society and we have to focus on social changes we don't have this utopia of really changing uh, the society, but we need to strengthen things. And the network is a bit difficult when it takes place virtually. We are discussing things here, but we want to go back to that uh, moment or that time when we were all together in person. But thank you to of reminding us of something that's really important regarding our relationships, being around a bonfire and drinking mate. And what happened in our meeting in Nova Friburgo, that's what happened there. It, and we have to really remember how positive it was for us to relate to each other in that fashion. I'd like to answer the question from Monica, how to articulate uh, everything with public policies. I think everything works in a parallel way. We have to rethink uh, the way we have uh, been developed. As Andres mentioned, our knowledge was based on science and it was separate from a social relation. We had to study about the self and not thinking about what was not part of that field. And that doesn't happen anymore that way. I think we have to produce our scientists aware that they have to have a critical attitude and that does not uh, limit being uh, a scientist science is science at any moment but the politicians change their political positions in accordance to their interests as what happened in the u.s that when trump was the president he was totally separate from the scientific actions and many things happened regarding climate changes so science and policies were separate and uh, science is from ecology but now we uh, resume this now they are listening to scientists and they base their attitude on uh, science as well. That's the path forward. How are we going to articulate this public policy knowledge? We need to redevelop or reformulate our basis. Our constitutions of countries like Bolivia and Ecuador and uh, these countries part of Pachamama, which is something that was re revolutionary. I think we need to have this constitutional attitude where public policies have to be based on the basis. This can be a major dream, but that's where we want to be during this century. Sí, a mí me gustaría eh, seguir un poco la línea de lo que menciona Fausto. Eh, esta idea de poder incidir en las This políticas. Idea 
of being able to uh, work on public policies and these decisions to be based on evidence, this is an important pathway. I have a comment on what science is. We could have a more in-depth debate on this when we think of our personal experiences when we talk about national policies of sustainable uh, work on the mountains. And this started to grow this year. There were many decisions which were not proper for the communities. So we face a challenge on different levels. How can we explain to a politician in a simple way that scientific knowledge is not neutral? That's very complex. We as researchers can do our individual part we face important challenges and many different changes in the paradox. We can do that at the university, um, working with the new generation of researchers for them to have this ethical stability, working with environmental ethics in disciplines that work specifically with the territories and also they must be persistent with public policies. This transformational process is going to take a long time until we can gets to the national level. And it all may have important consequences, such as what we are seeing in Chile now. For instance, getting water to the Cuenca Basin to a different place, how are we going to change all that? How are we going to consolidate the economic part? And there are ethical uh, aspects involved. Like Andres said, how can we put that into the constitution? That's very challenging. Well, a very complete debate on how we can uh, get to different people, public managers, people at the university, the, the, the importance of the focus on transdisciplinary view for the interventions in mountain environments. Well, I think we can move on to the third and last uh, set of questions. We can take 10, 12 minutes to answer all the, the other questions now. First question from Luis Felipe, from Cassin to Dr. Sergio Mendes but also all the others can comment, of course. He explained that Sergio talked about Atlantic mountains, and he would like, if possible, for him to strengthen that. Despite differences in altitudes, they have similarities, environmental similarities, and challenges as far as management, just like the Andes. Another question from Afonso Fernandes from the University of Concepcion. Are there evidences or practices in mountain areas that allows us to identify or differentiate the interdisciplinarity of transdisciplinarity? That's the second question. And the third and last question by Adriana de Kim, researcher at Embrapa Agrobiology at Novo Friburgo. To each speaker in the building of the network governance, what, in your experience, is the most important aspect? 
So three questions. Please. Whoever wants to answer, just activate your mic. I don't know if you would allow me to make a comment on the previous question. Of course, I would like to talk about the challenge between science and public policies and say that it's not easy to work with trans disciplines. We must learn so we in this panel have a transdisciplinary view, but we don't have a transdisciplinary formation. That leads me to my first point here that the cost I was talking about, the educational and heritage in all courses, whether for scientists or not, for people to, to have a transdisciplinary formation, regardless of the major they're studying. We need a new generation in this planet that transcends this idea. That's what's very important. And on the other hand, we need a systematic dialogue we must establish between the academy and those who are the decision makers. It's not easy because they are not formed in this interdisciplinary view. They have their own interests that overcome the well-being of nature and the environment and the other question on interdiscipline and transdiscipline, the inter one is the generation of knowledge from a combination of several different disciplines, several different uh, specialists that build this knowledge. And transdiscipline is related to collaboration where different participants, academic and non-academic, then we have the co-production of knowledge and that can be linked to the other question, whether there are evidences that allow to differentiate inter and transdiscipline to reduce the risk of disaster. There are many different examples of that when we scientists, social scientists are working with volcanoes or geologists and they go to the field to, to work with different fields of work to see what's happening in a flood, for instance or landslide, then we are working with interdiscipline we are generating from our knowledges. But that's not necessary. If, that, if we want to have an actual impact, we must get to transdiscipline, where we start to collaborate with the communities as well. And with the different professionals that work to reduce the risks of those uh, areas. We have to collaborate with scientists and the population and the politicians as of a local state. Then we, are, we will be working uh, with transdisciplinarity and also very important for Latin America after the pandemic, it's gonna be very stressful. Just the lack of uh, finance or research. Before the economic crisis, we already had many obstacles to get funding. But in Mexico, for instance, research is seen as something that 
Researchers are seen as people who go out to the field to spend money and do not bring any contribution to the society. And that's very severe in the crisis we're living in. The, the impact is going to be much greater, and we must think uh, about this. Thank you, Monica. Thank you for reminding us of the importance of the formation of the new generation of professionals and researchers from now. We must place the importance of working, showing the importance of transdisciplinarity to understand mountain environments. The other two questions, actually the three questions for all participants. One was initially for Sergio, the Atlantic Mountains, and the other uh, question for Adriana to all of you, talking about the governance of uh, LACMO with our network. I would like to comment on the Atlantic Mountains and the opportunity we had to work in Nova Friburgo and the mountains, mountains in the from a biogeographical perspective which I showed before, they have many different connections regarding many different plants, shared uh, genetics, uh, with the South of Andes, we can see in Southern Brazil, and we find these things also there. The birds, can show us an important connection. They, they migrate, they connect places which are far apart. And we, in ornithology, we see that as teleconnections. These teleconnections formed by birds make us think of our teleconnections. 